Hi Spire Fellas, this is Isom from Spire Research and Consulting Indonesia. Have you ever wondered how technology can help improve agriculture in Indonesia? Join me today for a quick session of Spire in Minute as we explore the growing trend of agri-tech in Indonesia. Agriculture has been a cornerstone of Indonesia's economy for centuries, employing millions of people and contributing significantly to the country's GDP. According to Center of Statistics, agriculture was the third larger sector in terms of its GDP contribution in the third quarter of 2022 alone, reaching 12.91%. According to CAN Research, the CIGR, or known as Compound Annual Growth Rate of Agritech Revenue in Indonesia, from 2016 to 2021, reached 39.7% and it is expected to increase by 31% in 2022 and to 2026. However, despite its significance on Indonesia's economy, traditional farming methods face many challenges, including climate change, water scarcity, and limited market access. That's where Agritech comes in. In many parts of Indonesia, farming is still done the traditional way, with simple tools and techniques and also challenging landscape to distribute the crop. This approach is often inefficient and unsustainable, leading to low yields and poor quality crops. With government support for agriculture and the advent of agritech in order to achieve food security in Indonesia, things are changing. Agritech refers to the use of technology to improve agriculture process from planting, harvesting, to marketing, and even distribution. In Indonesia, there is a vibrant ecosystem uh, ascending towards agritech, ranging from FAS, or known as Farmer as a Service, FinTech, Market Access, Agritech, Agribiotech, and also with the help of government bodies and institutions. As previously mentioned, that agritech consists of a FAS ecosystem in Indonesia, you might ask how it benefits the agriculture sector. There are several ways of agriculture to benefit from agritech. Number one is access to advanced technology. FAS provides farmers with access to advanced technology and equipment, which may be too expensive for small or medium-sized farms to purchase on their own. One of the examples is a fishery in providing fish farmers with automatic feeder machines which dispense food pellets at a predetermined intervals depending on the type of fish and the life cycle. Such small technological intervention was enough for farmers enrolled in the program to enjoy 20 to 30% increase in production, which is ultimately led to significant reduction in the amount of fish food they have to buy. This program alone can benefit the farms with increased efficiency, improved sustainability, and cost savings. Number two is access to finance. FinTech can enable our farmers to access finance more easily and at a lower cost. Particularly small-scale farmers who often lack collateral and formal credit histories. FinTech platform can use alternative data source such as satellite imagery to assess credit worthiness and over loans without requiring traditional collateral. The third one is digital marketplace. Agritech can enable farmers to access the digital marketplace and connect directly with buyers, reducing the need for intermediaries and improving price transparency. The fourth one is data-driven decision-making. Agritech can enable farmers to make data-driven decisions based on real-time data and analytics, improving efficiency, productivity, and profitability. Despite its numerous advantages, Getting farmers in rural areas to utilize their service is another story. Like any emerging industry, Agritech must face several challenges including First, access to technology. Like many farmers, particularly small-scale farmers in developing countries, may not have access to the technology needed to benefit from Agritech innovations. This can limit the potential impact of Agritech and create a digital divide. The second one is limited infrastructure. Agritech solutions often require robust infrastructure such as reliable internet connectivity and power supply, which may not be available in some rural areas. Last but not least is user adoption. 
The success of Agritech solutions depends on user adoption, which can be challenging if farmers are unaware of or do not trust the new technologies. There may be a need for targeted education and training programs to promote user adoption and help farmers realize the benefit of Agritech. Addressing these challenges will require collaboration between governments, the private sector, and the civil society organization to ensure that Agritech's innovations are accessible, safe, and effective for all farmers, regardless of their size or location. In conclusion, Agritech is revolutionizing farming in Indonesia and around the world. By leveraging the power of technology, we can create more efficient, sustainable, and profitable agricultural systems and with the challenge we face in the 21st century, it is more important than ever that we embrace these advances and work together to build a better future for all. However, there are several challenges to adapting architecture, such as limited access to technology and infrastructure, and also user adoption. It is important to collaborate with various stakeholders to address these challenges and ensure that agri-tech innovations are accessible and effective to all farmers, regardless of size or location. Thank you, that's all from me. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and see you next time. Bye!